I'm Terry Novak and I'm from Oregon. I, uh, originally, I was born in Taiwan. I immigrated to the States when I was a young child, about six years old, and grew up in um, Oregon on the west coast of the United States. And uh, most of my life I've been um, involved in businesses. I grew up in a restaurant business and I've worked, I'm, I'm considered myself a serial business person. I've had many, many businesses. The last one being in the uh, bridal and jewelry industry. And uh, about five years ago, my husband uh, asked me to come to Panama to look at some coffee plantations. He was interested in the whole business. He had been retired. He wanted to invest in something. And I thought, okay, maybe it was time to, to quit. Uh, so we retired and we came over for a coffee finca tour. And the first thing I said when, I, when we landed and got into our hotel in Boquete was, I think I can live here. And it was, I've never said anything like that before. I, uh, I was shocked. Uh, within that week, my husband bought this condo that we live in now. So, yes, we're a little compulsive, but after four years, I realized it probably was the best decision we've ever made. Uh, it allowed me the, um, it forced me to retire, to relax. And so, uh, the weather is fabulous. You can't beat it. Uh, it's ideal for retired people. You know, in Oregon, it's so rainy, it's so gray. Uh, when you're working, it's, okay to deal with that but when you're retired it's it gets overwhelming that's one of the draws that my husband had to to being in a sunnier place down south and uh, actually we we've had some experience living in belize uh, not actually living we had a we had a business a um, a dive business and uh, at one point, I was forced to manage it myself. So I had some experience living in the tropics, and I knew that that was a nice, a nice uh, situation. But the medical is not so good. It's just not as well developed. Uh, the infrastructure is not so good. So Panama seemed to give us the best of both worlds. Boquete is a special draw because it's in the highlands. It's uh, not in the big city. It's a small town, very comfortable. And there are a lot of uh, expats here from Canada and the US. I, I love it here because, especially here in Valles uh, Condido, it is a valley that is isolated uh, and uh, it's a community that's very close. Uh, we're very close to the center of town. And Boquete especially is charming in that it has a lot of, lot of great restaurants. Uh, and there are a lot of things to do. The library has fabulous concerts, world class. I, I'm amazed at how good uh, some of the productions have been. We have uh, a lot of hikes every day. If you ever want to take a hike, just look up uh, one of the uh, platforms uh, in the community and you can find a group. Call them up, tell them you want to join the group and they, everybody's welcomed. It's amazing. Uh, the other thing is there, if you have different interests, I swear there's a club for everything. We have, uh, we have mahjong games if you want. If you want to be a part of the pickleball club, you can, be, you can find them. Uh, but the most amazing part about this area is the warmth of uh, the Panamanians, uh, how welcoming they are. And uh, especially if you go out of your way to learn their language. It's, it really is 
an, an extra plus. They help you. They'll help you with your language. You know, years ago I went to France and I was stumbling with my French and I got laughed at. You know, in Paris, it's like if you don't speak perfect French, you're going to get laughed at. Not here. No, they'll help you. Uh, the other thing that I um, especially enjoy is um, the opportunity to be able to uh, share my talent or my experience in business with the community. Uh, that's why I joined the Rotary. Rotary is an international organization of over a million members and uh, so there's a tremendous network amongst Rotary chapters throughout the world. Here in Boquete uh, we have our own chapter, Club Rotario de Boquete, and uh, we work along with a lot of Rotary clubs in the States. They oftentimes come to visit us, and once they see that uh, we are on a project that fills a need in the community, they'll also participate by donating uh, quite a bit of money to us. We have some great foundations that are also donating uh, some meaningful money towards our project. One of our main project is EOL equal opportunity for learning. And uh, we are concentrated on getting children to learn math online by using technology. And one of the top technology we want to use is using a tablet. This tablet, this 10-inch tablet, has a SIM card slot in it. And that will give connectivity to the internet. We want to connect them to the internet because there are fabulous um, academies online and it's free education. One of the most famous is called Khan Academy. It's K-H-A-N academy.com. Right now they have 100 million students worldwide that learn math, science, a language, computer building, you name it. The academy has such breadth. You can start at first grade and go all the way into college level. And this is free education. It's been around for, I believe, almost 20 years, close to maybe 16, 17 years. And it's so relevant now with COVID-19. Uh, we have one young man, Adriel, here in Boquete, that hated math. He had math anxiety. And uh, one of our Rotarian met him, befriended him, an expat teacher, retired teacher. And she learned of his problem. And here he is a very bright young man, happy-go-lucky. But when you talk about math, that's, you know, he, he just becomes a different person. He failed. He failed uh, eighth grade math. And the school says, you have to pass math in order to go on to the next level. So he had to go to a summer school. At this point, it was perfect timing. Uh, our Rotarian, Ginny, uh, said, okay, I'll help you, I'll, I'll tutor you. Well, then Ginny uh, found out through Rotary about Khan and about the tablet, so she implemented that very thing, the tablet in Khan Academy, and introduced him to, um, to it, and 700 hours later, he became a math enthusiast, from a math hater to a math enthusiast. He became our poster child for EOL. It was, it was, you know, proof that you can get over 
this type of anxiety. You just need the right program. And what he said to us that was so uh, important was he says, you know, learning on Khan Academy allowed me to learn on, at my own rate. I could repeat or go as slowly as I want, and I don't feel any shame for it. And you know, when you get that kind of comment from a teenager, it's, it's that feeling of shame or embarrassment that gets young people, you know, whether it's in front of teachers or their peers. And so we really want to do this for as many students as we can. I think if we could do it to every student in, pa in Panama, Panama's test scores will be much better. Two years ago, there was a, an international testing of third grade math students. And unfortunately, Panama, out of 77 countries, was number 73, I believe. Ouch. And that shouldn't be. We don't need to have that type of score. One of the draws to Boquete is that feeling of safety. Uh, we, we, we feel like it's very relaxing to walk around. I uh, do not feel uh, fearful of walking, walking in the evening. I can go shopping alone. Uh, we drive to David often to go to Price Mart because that is where, that is our Costco here in, in uh, Panama. So you can buy in volume. And uh, David is a little more challenging for me because I'm, I'm not very good at driving, but my husband loves it. Third world driving is his thing. He thinks it's a challenge. Uh, but overall, I think this country is a very pleasantly safe place to be. Uh, is it perfect? No, no. But Boquete, I feel like is a paradise in terms of safety. And the other thing that we experienced when we were on this tour was my husband, somehow or other, he fell and he had touched something and came up with an infection on his hand and it was swollen. This is on a Sunday. And we went to the, uh, the person, in, the manager of the B&B that we were living in. We said, what can we do? And they said, oh, no problem. Just walk down to the center of town. We have a couple of clinics open. And, you know, and he described, he said, this one clinic, it's very good. You, you won't see it unless you really look for these signs. And so he instructed us on how to get there. On a Sunday, we walked in and uh, my husband was diagnosed and then he got a shot and some uh, antihistamine and $50 later we walked out at no paperwork. My husband was well within two days and I thought this is the kind of <laughs> setup I like. In the States, my gosh, you have to have you know, your insurance card and you have to do this paperwork and that paperwork and by the time you're done it's three, four hundred or if you go to a hospital it's a few thousand, it's, you know. So, in some ways, Panama, I think, is more comfortable. It's less bureaucratic. I, I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but it just seems like it's a little more simple. Even prescriptions, so when my husband walked in for his pills, rather than having a whole prescription of whatever, minimum of 30, they cut out exactly 16 pills for him out of the package. I come from Oregon where it's a fairly highly taxed state. We pay over 10% tax. Uh, that's generally property tax. 
and other taxes rolled together, but over 10% of our yearly income goes toward tax. Here in Panama, it's considerably lower. And plus, being an expat, there's a, there's a situation if, if you buy property, you can uh, have tax-free, you can be exempt of taxes for 20 years. On this condo, it actually goes with the house that you buy. On this condo that we bought, we still have uh, quite a few years left of being exempt from paying any taxes. But if we were to have to pay tax, it would be a couple of hundred dollars versus thousands of dollars that we were paying in the States. So that's very nice. Car insurance is a lot more reasonable here. In the States, we pay around $1,200 for my husband and I to, to be insured with our car. Here, we're paying about $500 for the both of us. Now, a lot of it has to do with the kind of car we drive as well. In, in the States, we had a BMW, we had two BMWs, and here we just have a Kia. So there is a difference, but you don't need big BMWs here. You want to buy the car that is easy to fix, that's popular, that's affordable, and uh, it's just more relaxed. And the other thing about shopping, um, shopping is here in Boquete, feels a little more reasonable than the States, but uh, compared to, let's say, David, I think it's more expensive, and I'm not sure why. Uh, restaurants, the prices in restaurants are not necessarily very uh, low, uh, and uh, I think there are certain things that are rather high. Uh, meats are rather expensive. Fish, surprisingly, is rather expensive to me. Produce is pretty good because we live in the heart of fincas all over. This is the bread basket of Panama. So you get fabulous produce at a very reasonable price and it's straight from the farm. Fruit is delicious and reasonable. I know in, in the States, I would have to pay $4.95 for a pineapple. Here it's a dollar. That's expensive. If you buy off of a truck, it could be quite a bit less. And it's straight from the farm. Pineapple, papaya, bananas, all these fruits are year-round available. So that is a big appeal. You can eat very healthy uh, and not have to pay a lot. As far as moving to Panama, personally, we decided to buy our condo the first week that we were here on a visit. And that's unusual because most of the time, uh, it is recommended that you rent a place, maybe rent a couple of places in different areas to find out what area you like. Having said that, the first year that we did move here, and our, we were waiting for our containers. We were staying in a casita in Alto Boquete. And in Alto Boquete, we're at a higher level. Here in Boquete Abajo, we're in a valley. And in Alto Boquete, it's a lot more windy. And I had no idea. This is when I learned about microclimates. I did not know that there are so many microclimates here. I guess that's why the coffee here is so wonderful because they have these different terrains and different acidities in the soil. So rain is another issue. We come from Oregon where it's very, very rainy and uh, Six months of the year, we're dealing with mist. Here they call it Bahariki, 
but uh, we're dealing with const in Oregon. We're constantly dealing with a gray fog. It can get foggy here. It's very beautiful. But during the rainy season, which is usually from May through December, but the worst of it is probably September and October. And you need to love rain if you want to stay up here in the highlands. It is quite rainy, but it's really refreshing. It doesn't rain from morning till night like in Oregon, where I come from, but you can count on a good dousing of rain every evening. But the sun will come up in the morning. Today has been a beautiful day, beautiful morning. We could walk, we could get all our stuff done. By about three o'clock, you can count on maybe staying in and uh, riding through the rain. <laughs>